So I'm carrying on with my JFET biasing description and I'm going to finish finish off here with doing a, a few examples. And we'll look at some circuits like we, we did in the last circuit, the self bias circuits. And then we'll look at a different type of biasing circuit called a voltage divider bias. And if you remember from your BJT circuits, we had a voltage divider bias circuit in with BJTs. Well, this is very similar, with J, except instead of having a BJT, we have a JFET in the circuit. All right, here's the, the first example. Again, another self bias circuit. So I've got my my n-channel JFET here connected up to a 12 volt source a thousand ohm resistor in the in the drain 470 ohm resistor connected to the source and then we've got this biasing resistor over here 100, 100 kilo ohms at the at the gate and we're only looking at the DC part here, but just to remind you, we're going to apply an input signal here, and if this is a common source amplifier, we're going to have an output signal over here. And we've got a a VGS off that can range between minus two volts and minus 8 volts. If we were to look at a data sheet for a particular JFET and for example the 2N5459 we would find that there is a range for the VGS off or the VP and the IDSS is also going to have a range. It ranges between 16 milliamps and 4 milliamps and that this is the actual uh, ranges for, for a 2N5459 so what are some things that we know about this equa about this circuit? Well, we know Shockley's equation, the relationship between ID and VGS off, or ID and VGS. And since we have a range, we'll actually have two extreme, two, two equations uh, mapping out the extremes. So at the one extreme, we're going to have an ID SS of 4 milliamps and a, and a VGS of minus 2 volts. So VGS over minus 2 all squared here, so that, that would be um, one of one Shockley's equation and the other Shockley's equation would be ID is equal to 16 milliamps, so the, the maximum IDSS along with the maximum VGS off 1 minus VGS over minus 8 all squared. And we're going to solve do this uh, all the solution graphically so I'm going to start off before, before we look at the other equation that we're going to need, I'm going to graph both of these on the, on the same graph to show you um, the ranges that we could possibly get for, uh, for, for the, the graph of Shockley's equation. Okay, so if I, I let's label these two, these two extremes, one with the minimums and one with the maximums, one and two. So for, for equation one, what are the four points that we're going to have for VGS and ID? We'll have zero volts and four milliamps at one extreme, and minus two volts for the VP and zero milliamps when we're at when we're at pinch off. We're going to use a point three of v, VP here, so minus zero point six volts gives us half of ID, and half of VP minus one volt gives us a quarter of ID um, IDSS, I should say. So we plot this out, and we get, um, let's see, at zero, we get minus, at zero volts, we get four milliamps, and at minus two volts, we get zero milliamps, at minus 0 0.6 volts, we get two milliamps, and at minus one volt, we get one milliamp. So we have a curve that looks like this. For the, for the minimum VP and the minimum IDSS and for equation number two values for I, VGS and ID 0 volts and VP of minus 8 volts and the points in between of 0.3 of VP so 0.3 of VP is 4.8 volts uh, what am I saying? 2.4 volts Two 
2.4 volts and half of VP minus 4 volts. Yeah, this is minus here. Um, IDSS at when VGS is zero, so ID is IDSS, and that it was 16 milliamps. When we have VP, ID is going to be zero milliamps. When VGS is at 0.3 of VGS off, ID is at half of IDSS, so 8 milliamps. When VGS is at half of VP, ID is at a quarter of IDSS, so 4 milliamps. So what are my points on, on this graph? Well, I've got my one extreme there, I've got my other extreme there, my points in between at minus 2.4, I'm at 8. Minus 2.4 volts, I'm at 8 milliamps. And at minus 4 volts, I'm at 4 milliamps. So those are the two extreme curves that I can have for the transfer characteristics of this 2N5459. And the actual curve could be could be anything in between as long as my, my start point is somewhere between these two dots, these two points for VGS, and as long as my end point for ID is, IDSS is somewhere between 16 milliamps and 4 milliamps. So I'm really just I'm getting the, the extremes of the two equations. Now the third piece of information I need, so I've got my two transfer characteristics, I want my characteristic for this particular circuit. And that characteristic is what, it, what is VGS equal to? Well the gate voltage is 0 volts and the source voltage is ID times minus 4700. So VGS is 0 volts for the gate minus VS which is ID, not 4700, ID times 470. So VGS equals negative 470 ID. And I'm gonna, I can plot this on the graph. I'm going to do it in green over here. So I pick a couple of points because this is just a straight line. I pick ID of 0. VGS is 0. And on my other extreme, I'm going to pick an ID of 10 milliamps, which will give me a VGS of 4.7 volts. So 10 milliamps. 10 milliamps, 4.7 volts is right about there, and draw the line between them. So somewhere on this line will be my operating point, and it depends on my actual values for VGS off and ID. And it's going to be somewhere, somewhere between here and here for my actual, for my actual operating point. Now let's look at another type of biasing circuit. This is a voltage divider bias circuit. And I've drawn one out here. I forgot my source, the VDD. And you can see the voltage divider bias. It uses a voltage divider to set the gate voltage. And we can use the rules of Kirchhoff's voltage laws and Ohm's law, as well as some of the basic ideas of, of the way JFETs work, to figure out what the operating point of a, of a voltage divider circuit is. Operating point, things I need to know, gate source voltage and drain current, and also the drain source voltage if that's something that I need. So some of the rules that I know about that transistor, the gate current is going to be about zero amps, no current going into the into the gate here. Therefore the voltage at the gate is simply going to be equal to VDD times R2 over R1 plus R2. It's just VDD is applied across R1 and R2 and some of the voltage drop will be across R1, some across R2 so that VDD gets divided between the two and the fraction that goes in R2 is based on this equation here. I also know that that's the first piece of information, second piece of information that I know the voltage at the source, the voltage right at that point is going to be equal to the voltage drop across RS so and that's just based on Ohm's law, ID times RS gives me the voltage at the source. So putting that and that together, VGS is equal to the gate voltage, VDD times R2 over R1 plus R2, minus the voltage at the source, ID RS. So assuming I know all of the all of the values of the resistors and I know the value of the of the voltage source, I can I've got an equation relating VGS and ID. The other piece of information of course that I know 
is Shockley's equation ID is equal to IDSS times 1 minus VGS over VGS off all squared so IDSS is a constant, VGS is a constant, another, so we have another equation relating ID and VGS. So two equations I've got here designated as 3 and 4, and two unknowns, the things I don't know, VGS and ID. So I can, I can solve for VGS and ID graphically, like I did in the, with the self-by circuit, or I can solve numerically. So I've put some numbers into a circuit here, and what we want to figure out is the operating point for this particular circuit. So, what have I got? I've got my gate voltage is equal to the voltage divider between the 100K and the 27K resistor. So 12 volts times 27 over 127 works out to 2.55 volts. My source voltage is equal to 680 ID so my gate source voltage will be 2.55 minus 680 ID so there's one equation relating VGS and ID the second equation relating VGS and ID is Shockley's equation ID is equal to IDSS 0 0.04 amps times 1 minus VGS over minus 3 and then this is all squared so the information that I can I can create from these two equations to create my graphs looks like this. So from, from Shockley's equation, I get VGS and ID. So my VGS of zero my four points for VGS is zero volts. Let's go with uh, and then 0.3 times VGS off or VP, 0.3 times VP. So that's negative 0.9 volts, half of VP minus 1.5 volts and VP minus 3 volts gives me an ID of IDSS for for this point give me an ID of half of IDSS for this point and quarter of IDSS for this point and of course zero for for this point so there's one graph or one one set of points for for Shockley's equation and for the linear relationship due to the to the circuit the linear, linear relationship between VGS and ID uh, well there's a little bit more work here than, than in the previous uh, self-bias circuit, but I can pick two points, one with ID is 0 milliamps and the other where VGS is 0 volts. And I get uh, when ID is 0, I plug it into to this equation right here. If ID is 0, I get VGS of 2.55 volts. And if VGS is 0 volts, I get an ID of 3.75 milliamps. So these two points are going to give me, I can draw the straight line from those, these four points are going to help me draw the quadratic e equation. And this is what I end up with when I plot those two graphs and I find my intersection point is very close to IDSS, very small VGS, and an ID close to IDSS. Okay, one more problem. One more question here, and this one's a design question. This time we want to design a circuit and do a self-bias circuit here. Design self-bias circuit that has the following characteristics. We've got a JFET that has IDSS of 10 milliamps, has a VP of minus 5 volts, and we want an ID to be a quarter of IDSS. So that's going to be 2.5 milliamps. And we need a VDS of 8 volts. And our source is 20 volts. So self bias circuit. So that means it's going to... V in here. Here's my JFET. Some RS here. A 20 volt source. Biasing here with a one, let's say one mega ohm resistor at the gate. Over here at the source, we've got an RS. Oops, this is RD up here. And so we want to figure out what values of RD and RS are going to work for this circuit. Well, to start off with, 
if we look at Shockley's equation again, ID is equal to 0 0.01 times 1 minus VGS over VP is minus 5 all squared. Well, I want an ID of 2.5 milliamps, so I can plug that number in here. An ID of 2.5 milliamps, 0 0.0025. I only have one unknown in this equation I can solve for VGS. Let's not do the algebra here, but I can figure out that VGS is going to be equal to minus 2.5 volts. So that's my there's my operating point. VGS of minus point minus 2.5 volts with an ID of, of 2.5 milliamps. For self-biased circuits like this, our gate voltage is at zero. And our source voltage then is is going to just be determined by the current through here, this circuit uh, through this resistor times the resistance of it. VGS, we know what it is. It's minus 2.5 volts, and that's equal going to be equal to zero minus IDRS. Well, I know what ID is. I can plug the number in here for ID. 0 0.0025 RS, and here's my equation here. I have only one unknown. I can solve for RS. RS is equal to 1 kilo ohm. So I have a 1 kilo ohm resistor that's going to set my VGS up for, for what I need. The only thing left is figuring out what value I need for RD. Well, in this particular circuit here, we've got 20 volts. We're applying Kirchhoff's voltage law. We've got 20 volts from the source, minus the drop across RD, minus VDS, minus the drop across RS, gives, brings me down to zero. So setting that equation up, 20 volts minus IDRD, so that's 2.5 milliamps times RD minus VDS. Well, I know what VDS I want. I want a VDS of 8 volts. So minus 8 volts minus, well, this is just the source voltage, VS. I've already figured out what, what VS is. It's 2.5 volts. Brings us down to zero. And the only thing that I don't know in this equation is RD, so I can solve for RD, and I get a value of 3,800 ohms. So I put a RD of 3,800 ohms, an RS of 1 kilo ohm, and I've got my self-bias circuit set up to give me these parameters. So I hope these examples have helped you get an understanding of biasing circuits for JFETs, and I'll see you in the next video.